Hi, it's time for Good Energy and I'm Dr. Julie and welcome to Bodyful Day 199. We are talking about shortness of breath and the senses and today we're talking about the vestibular sense. So today is a chilly day here in uh, southeastern Iowa and um, it is almost so cold that it is taking my breath away. It's not that bad. Um, but we're starting to move into winter and I'm thinking I need to keep myself a little warmer these days. Um, all right, today we are talking about the vestibular sense. The vestibular sense is where you are in space. So where you are in relationship to gravity or relationship to the force, to forces of gravity. And so today we're going to talk about how that relates to shortness of breath. But let's start out with our basics. Go ahead and take a deep breath in. And release. And take a deep breath in. Expand in the belly. Expand in the chest. Expand in the sinuses. And as you do, your tailbone will tuck under ever so slightly and release and since we are talking about shortness of breath let's try today to breathe into your lung apices now apices is plural for apex and your lung apex is this little itty bit that kind of hangs out up here it's not doesn't go all the way up into here clearly because that's your muscle but it just kind of goes up into this area and so what you want to do is you want to breathe into your lung apices. So instead of concentrating on a belly breath, concentrate on a very top breath. Here we go. Deep breath in. And release. Now, if you have never tried to breathe into your lung apices before, that's new to you. Um, one of the things that you can do here is that instead of just breathing into this front part, make sure you're also breathing into the back part. You know, the part that they tap on when they're checking your lungs. Um, breathe into that back area. So let's do one more when we're breathing into the lung apices, but not just into the front, but also into the back. Let's take a deep breath in. and release okay so the vestibular sense gravity gravity what does gravity how does gravity cause or remember we're working from the healing equation energy to heal equals good energy and minus stressors and we're trying to figure out how each of our senses has a tendency to either be a stressor or can be a source of good energy in and when we use phrases like take my breath takes my breath away or that took my breath away um that is of course a case of shortened breath <gasps> you're not breathing as much and interestingly your the cold air so the sense of touch which we haven't got into can take your breath away but so can the vestibular sense. So going from 60 to zero in a very short amount of time can literally squish your lungs together or you squish your lung in the space that they have and that can literally take your breath away. So the vestibular sense moving from zero to 60, moving from 60 to zero, can definitely cause a shift in your ability to breathe. The other way to think about this is going on a roller coaster or going on a fair ride where G-forces, gravitational forces, G-forces are whipping you around. And in doing so, even the stupid little spinny thing that starts out with spinning like this and then you go up and then it spins on the side so you're spinning over the top of each other, um, even that simple spinning maneuver, even just the, the tilt-a-whirl, you know, where you're actually just tilting yourself around, um, ha can do the G-forces enough to ah, make you exhale and have to find a space 
to take a breath in. So shortness of breath can be, can arise because of the stressor of the vestibular sense. Now, um, if we're talking about uh, car sickness and motion sickness or air sickness, um, you definitely also are going to have a decrease in breath when that garbage starts to come up. So G-forces will physically collapse the space that or push the lungs into a smaller space, which will make it harder to breathe. And having some form of G-force related motion sickness is going to cause you to have shortness of breath, especially if you have that sickness because you are not going to like it and you are going to take smaller breaths so that you are not pushing into your abdominal area lest you provoke yourself enough that you end up throwing up. So um, the vestibular system can be, can scuttle or can cause shortness of breath. But with that same idea, can we find a way to allow the body to have its most amount of space so that you can take your biggest possible breath. We can do that through the vestibular system. We can do that by floating. Probably not on air. There's again a compression issue and a g-force issue. But floating in a pool, floating in a sensory deprivation tank, floating takes gravitational forces and loosens them up a little bit because of the pushing of the water up against the body. There's less just straight pulling. And so sometimes floating, if you are not doing extra motion to actually keep yourself up, um, or you're not floating on your back and feeling everything sink in, you can take a much better breath when you are floating. Um, we can also think about the fact that uh, sometimes people can breathe better. And again, we're talking about moving lungs into their entire space when they are inverted. Now, not a lot of the time, but sometimes you can. When you are inverted, even though your breath is working against, even though your diaphragm is working against gravity to go up, and you are working against the pressure of your organs coming down onto your diaphragm, sometimes that slightly different, slight different space, because you're now breathing, now your lungs can go up and out easily, can get you also a better breath. But that is hit or miss depending upon who you're working with. So you can try it. You can see, hey, was I better able to uh, breathe when I was hanging upside down on the monkey bars? Yeah, I think I could for a little bit, just as a fun way of, you know, a fun difference from normal. But eventually I preferred to breathe when I was right side up. So I would penny drop over and we would start again. Um, but floating, I always find that floating on, floating in the water, is just an immensely re relaxing thing and allows me to breathe and take breaths so much better, probably for a couple of reasons, one of which is the vestibular, but the other one is probably because of the moisture in the air, because you are right at the surface, and because there is something about not having any other stressors on your body. Gravity is not an issue. G-forces are not an issue spinal compression and joint compression and all of your other senses are essentially relaxed such that you can just focus on taking a breath. And so in that sense, that breath is going to be much bigger than it would be if you were standing. Interesting things. A little hard to meditate in the uh, local community pool, um, but if you could, you know, if obviously a sensory deprivation tank would be a place to be because the saline levels would keep you even buffeted higher and, and you wouldn't have to worry about kids jumping in off the side and splashing you. So there are multiple ways that you could practice getting yourself 
could energy in from the vestibular sense if you were able to float and work on your breath. Now, all of this is the idea that we work on our breath, sensory connection with our breath as often as we can so that we develop a better connection with our breath and when we need it, when we do run into times of shortness of breath, we can remember that, hey, my sensory system is probably either the cause of this, and I could work on disconnecting those things, or knowing that I've already had practice on how to expand my breath, how can I tap into that good energy and help myself get through bouts of shortness of breath? All right. So let's finish up today. Let's take a deep breath in and release. All right, have a great day. I will see you here tomorrow where we have one of three more senses left to go. Take care.